Hi guys, welcome to week 15 of the Camping Corner. It's Mallory. And Tony. Awesome. So we're going to just jump right into what's the buzz. What is the buzz this week? I love the picture. This thing is awesome. The fat bear. Oh yeah. Yeah. So the fat bear. This guy. Yeah. This is what I'm going to look like after quarantine. What about you? You know, I, I like the idea, you know, when you open like a thing of Pillsbury, like Grand's biscuits and you pop the seal and it it like pops out yeah that's me that's how my pants feel right now yeah Yeah. I do love the video kind of that goes along with the fat bear of what if animals had different shapes there's a little cartoon that shows up on social media okay and there's a cheetah chasing like a deer and the cheetah's like a ball he's round (laughs) and the deer's round so when the cheetah misses it's lunge at the deer. It like rolls and bounces and. Da, da, okay. Da. Yeah, that's that's you know, working on the quarantine bod. Yeah, don't don't judge me when summer gets here. Yeah, yeah. I was not prepared. I'm in shape. It's round. <laughs> All yeah, the way. I'm not around. in good shape. I'm just yeah. in shape. Yeah. There are going to be people once everything the quarantine's lifted and people get out and they go like to the music festivals and there are people there doing face painting. Mm -hmm. There are people that are going to get it painted like a globe and they're just going to fit in. (laughs) I, there may be, there may be those body types out there for sure. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Yeah. No, but speaking of racing, you're talking about the cheetah chasing. Speaking of racing, this is something that you mentioned last week. Yep, yep. This video is pretty pretty funny of, of the the RVs racing around the, the corner <laughs> exactly. or racing around the track. Super cool, super funny. Yes. You know, kind of goes along with it. I think we're a couple days, hopefully, cross your fingers, cross your toes, cross your eyes. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we're a couple days away from the campgrounds opening here in Indiana, which would be super awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about anybody else. I'm ready to go camping. Yeah, me too. I'm going to be racing right along with these guys. Yeah. yeah. So last week we kind of talked about the cake, the camping cake, right? Yeah. Had the little camp, the candles stuck down in it for the campfire. Yep. Yeah. So now we've got these little campfire cupcakes, which are adorable. Absolutely. And they look fantastic. The funny thing I think about baking, my wife loves to watch baking shows, and it's absolutely amazing. And there's hours and hours of prep, just like these cupcakes. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of time put into prepping those things for a fat guy like me to eat them in two bites. I know. I feel bad almost eating it. You know what I mean? No, I never feel bad about (laughs) eating sweets. Doesn't matter. (laughs) You know, even if if my wife would make something like that and tell me that it took her six hours for for prep time and bake time and making them perfect, I'd still eat them in two bites. (laughs) Yeah. Heartless. We also had a um, Facebook, one of our Facebook friends made this cake for her nephew. Yeah, absolutely super cool. How cute. Um, You know, even the kids love to go camping. They want a camping cake too. They do. I want a camping cake. Maybe our executive producer will make us a camping cake that we can have sometime on the episode. I don't know if I'd get our hopes up for that. (laughs) Probably not. But... (laughs) So, you know, we, we are always looking at all these cool RVs and things like that that's, that people submit to us. Mm-hmm. This was super cool this week. This all wood, uh, class C, super cool, looks really timeless and, and just absolutely beautiful. So yeah. I, a lot of craftsmanship, a lot of work that yeah. went into that. Very rustic, a lot of wood, definitely a lot of thought and detail went into every aspect of this class C. So. Yeah, and, you know, something that's very cool, I think somebody made a comment about it, you know, looking like a hobbit house, mm-hmm. uh, something like that, you know, because there is a lot of, uh, there's there's just a tremendous amount of craftsmanship in it. Super cool. It is super cool. And if you want to go the other route, then you've got this sleek, modern, class A of, okay, fine, I'll go camping. Yeah. Pull yeah. my arm. <laughs> yeah. And take your mini, your your Mini Cooper with you and just <laughs> stick it down underneath down the belly. Underneath, yeah. No towing a vehicle nope. behind you. Nope. Do you guys think you would lose a lot of living space because of that? Um, no, I think you'd lose all of that basement. That storage space. All that space. big, massive storage space down underneath there. Yeah. I just don't understand how you drive it up on there. So that whole thing comes out, and then yeah. you drive up on it, and then yeah, it goes in? Yeah, and then it 
then pulls it back up on a under. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's the, yeah, that's the only what way. What is your guess? We're going to ask everybody. What is your guess? And I don't know if I can find the answer or not, but what is your guess on the price tag for something like that? Oh, my gosh. So a few years ago, there was... Was it Monaco that built a diesel motorhome that used a fire truck chassis? Because a, a, a big fire truck obviously is diesel, but the engine is in the middle because mm -hmm. of water tanks and stuff like that. So several years ago, there was a, uh, and I think it was Monaco that built a diesel motorhome, used the fire truck chassis. So it was a mid-engine diesel, mm -hmm. and then in the back, the back end opened up kind of like a toy hauler, and you could pull a Mini Cooper or a Volkswagen, the new bug, up in the back of it and haul it. Oh. And they were, you know, they were pricey, right? you know, back in the 90s, but it was a, a kind of a super cool idea. So, so what's your guess on a price, each one of you? Oh, the, would, the, I, one with, the one with the Mini Cooper, that's, that's half mil. Yeah, I would say pretty close. To, I'd say you're half mil to a million somewhere, and I would say I know that's a huge gap, but you've got to be somewhere in there. Yeah, you're you're half million. So we've talked about camping hacks in the past. I love this one, and the reason I love this one is because you know tent campers always have some really cool and unique storage way, like just ways to keep the critters out of their food, right? Because with an RV, you've got a little bit more way to keep them out. But I have had it where we've been out making s'mores or something and a darn raccoon just came come up, took the bag of marshmallows and was off, right? Right. So I love these different like food storage ideas. So I love this little, looks like a little greenhouse herb garden storage. Yeah, great idea. Stuff's put outside, keep the bees and things like that away from stuff. And then if it starts raining, it's protected and all that great stuff. Exactly. But on your story, better a raccoon than a skunk. True, true. I was so mad though that I mean at least they didn't take the chocolate, but they took the marshmallows. I mean, take the graham crackers. You know, out of everything from the s'more, steal the graham crackers. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah, but the graham crackers aren't good without the chocolate or no, the marshmallow. It's true. Marshmallows and chocolate are good by themselves. Yeah. But Even the raccoon knows that. I'm not gonna eat a graham cracker by itself. I do love. So, my wife laughs at me because I call raccoons trash pandas. Yeah. I do love the, I think it's an insurance commercial where the, the the trash pandas steal the trash truck. Have you seen that? <laughs> I haven't and they're, seen dri that they're one. driving with the <laughs> in the trash truck. Absolutely hysterical because they're ta they're they're talking about the odors that they smell, you know, and you know smells like burnt fish and all this great stuff. It's, it's just hysterical. I think, it's, I think it's hysterical. Oh, that's funny. Absolutely. Stinking trash pandas. So around the web. Yeah. All right. So now, from we're gonna talk about ten reasons why, or ten ways you know you're addicted to camping. Yeah. <laughs> I can name like thirty-seven of them. <laughs> so one is your real home's falling apart, but your RV looks fantastic, right? Yeah. I fall into that. I I, I fall <laughs> so far into that category, in the hopes that the campground's gonna open the second. Yeah. Yesterday. I was standing outside when it was raining. I was looking at my yard, and I know my yard's going to need mowed by the weekend. But I honestly was thinking, well, it's not going to get mowed this weekend. I'm going to the campground. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm already ready. Yeah. I'm, I'm ready. Yeah. The second way that you know that you're addicted, you're more excited about your next trip than you are about Christmas. That's probably me. I get excited for Christmas, don't get me wrong but I get more excited for camping. I'm Scrooge. I'm, I'm Scrooge for <laughs> Christmas. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely more excited about going camping. than. Yeah. But at Christmas, we always get a gift card for the state parks for their campground. So that's exciting. I have, I'm excited about that. That also shows that you may be addicted. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> so then the third one kind of ties in to what I just said you don't ask for Christmas presents you ask for travel money I don't ask for the gift fart gift fart <laughs> you sharted oh last my week gosh. you sharted last week and you farted this week <laughs> gift card gift card whoo <laughs> never a dull moment 
I'm going to get it together, and, guys. And no matter what you say this week, uh, you can't say, oh, I watched that over and over I again. I know. And I was sure I said snorted. Because <laughs> I know exactly what I said this time. <laughs> Gift card. <laughs> Gift card. Oh, my so, goodness. <laughs> kind of going along with that, you also know you're addicted to camping when all of your story, <laughs> stories start with this one time at the campground. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still thinking of hard. But <laughs> this one time last year at the campground, we were all ready to go to bed. My, my buddy Jordan was over sitting by the fire having some beers. Jordan wasn't ready to stop. He wanted to keep on. We went in, shut the lights off, left Jordan sitting by the fire, <laughs> went to bed. He left sometime. I have no idea when. But I've done that twice to Jordan. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is a trend. <laughs> well, you know. Night, Jordan. See ya. <laughs> but. So, number five, you start to tremble and shake if you're in your real house for too long. And I feel like maybe a lot of people might feel like this right now. We've actually, our campers in our driveway have stayed in it the last four nights just to get out of our real house. Look right? at di- different four walls. Yeah, different scenery. Yeah. It's been kind of nice. Also, you are you know you're addicted to camping if you make all of your meals over the fire if you're even if you're not at the campground yeah. right <laughs> yeah looking for you know hey i think i can throw that on the grill or right over the fire i can yep. do that yep <laughs> you know yeah i think even if like while you're making dinner over a stove if that thought comes to your head hey i could here's how i could make this over a fire yeah. then yeah you're addicted. i think if i put enough aluminum foil around it i could make a souffle nobody move but i'm gonna do it on the grill <laughs> i couldn't make a souffle if Bobby Flay, is he, is that a... Yeah, that's a, a, yeah. Or Guy, 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 Guy Fieri. Yeah. (laughs) Was standing right there going, this is how you, how you do it. You can tell Tony watches a lot of cooking shows. (laughs) My wife is addicted to cooking shows. Really? She loves cooking shows. That's awesome. Baking shows specifically. She doesn't bake, but she loves, loves baking shows. Okay. Number seven is you have a dresser dedicated to camping clothes. I have one of these for my kids, for sure. You know, the old clothes that you don't care if they, what happens to them. I, no, I, honestly, I don't get that. Because camping clothes, I need like four pair of underwear, three pairs of shorts, a pair of flip-flops, and a couple t-shirts. Good to go. Good to go. I, I don't, I don't, camping clothes is just, maybe a sweatshirt. Yeah. Yeah. How many days of camping did you just equate that to in your mind? Oh, that's two weeks right there. <laughs> Four pairs of underwear for two weeks? Well, yeah. They're inside. We're having, wear them normal. That's another. And you flip them inside out. That's two days right there. That's a whole other episode of Camping Corner yeah. right there. That's still only eight days, even if you're flipping them in and out. So but you're at just, some point, you're going to be wearing swim trunks because you went to the pool. Oh, okay. I was like, at some point, are you going commando? Like, what are... Well, in, in swim trunks, I don't think people wear <laughs> underwear in their swim trunks. At least I don't. I, I don't think people do. Somebody probably does. They might. <laughs> What's number eight? <laughs> <laughs> number eight. Oh! Number eight! <sighs> You're addicted to camping if you get married and your honeymoon involves either... Hey, y'all, we're taking the RV <laughs> or the outdoors of some sort. So you went canoeing, kayaking, something outdoor related, yeah. and that's your honeymoon. You know, after hearing all of them, if my husband watches this, I feel like I am 90% of these. Because we've taken an anniversary trip in our camper to Mammoth Cave, or our anniversary trips have always been taking the boat, going to a lake of some sort, like some sort of outdoor. Right. Man, okay, I'm more addicted than I thought. Let's put it into perspective. So the next one is daydreaming about camping while at work, which I think for us, what do we, I mean, what do we do for a living, right? right? <laughs> That's all we're, we do is think about. Yeah, what's all we think about as campers and camping in general with what we do. So I feel like I do apply to that one, but it's not completely my fault. Right. But on top of that, so have you ever had a client tell you about a trip that they're planning on taking and you immediately get jealous? Yeah, or you like research it like right after yeah. they oh, leave. Ne- I'm, I've never heard of that place. i got to check it out. Yep. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Yep. <laughs> so 
That also t t goes along with number 10, which is you're already planning camping trips for this time next year. Yeah. We, yeah. I'm probably two years from now. I'm, I'm out two years. But I think anymore you kind of have to be, too, because campgrounds, a lot of campgrounds do fill up fast, so you have to. I'm defending that one, but... <laughs> no, it's, I, but yeah, you, and you're absolutely right. They, they do fill up fast and, and all that great stuff, but uh, it just goes to show, you know, camping is the original social distancing. It is, for sure. People were social distancing in camp, campgrounds before it was a thing, mm -hmm. before it was a forced thing. Yeah. Or trendy. I would agree completely. Yeah. So, let's keep with list. And this week, let's talk about in Go Go Gadget Corner. Yeah. <laughs> let's talk about a list of the the top things that you need for your RV. All right. Number one, the twist off termination valve right at the end. Mm -hmm. Yes, it gives you two gate valves, but it solves a, a a serious problem that can arise if you have that right there. Yeah. No, it's a good one. So second one is a roof vent cover, which we get I get asked about these quite a bit. They're nice because once they're installed, your vent is open, but it's also protecting you against that water damage and that moisture damage. Sure. Doesn't let bugs in. Exactly. And you always got a fresh breeze and all Exactly. That good stuff. Absolutely. Okay. So number three is the roof gutter extenders. So these are nice, they just keep the water further away from your camper when it's raining. Just protects you know, your coach, your investment a little bit better. The majority of the units I think that, that we have currently mm -hmm. all have those on them, but if they don't, those are something that can be added. Yeah, or you run across an older model that maybe doesn't have yeah. them. So number four on the list, which possibly could be number one, arguably number one, a water pressure regulator. Mm -hmm. Gives you the capability that you can protect your plumbing, all that stuff, and a good... T tip, camping tip, camping hack, key, put it at the stub out before your hose so you don't put it at the camper, turn the water pressure on and blow up your water hose. See, this was a new one for me, so I am I like to learn about this stuff because yeah. I don't know all the gadgets out there, yeah. so that was a new one for me. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Okay, stabilizer jack socket, um, a necessity if you don't have electronic... All right, so number five is the stabilizer jack socket. So this is nice so you can use your drill to lower your jacks if they're manual jacks, right? It's nice, Every a lot of people do that, in all honesty, if you've got the manual jacks, or nobody wants to sit there and crank them. Right, if you're still <laughs> cranking them, and if you've cranked them more than a couple times, you are a glutton for punishment. Oh, kudos, yeah, I don't know, like yeah. that's. <laughs> Cause you can just, you do it with a drill and it just makes life <laughs> Another thing that's super cool, a lot of your RVs now have, have rounded corners on the doors, but there are still some out there that have square cut corners. But even if you have rounded corner doors, mm -hmm. this little ball, this little roller uh, ball that you put on the corner of your door, that way if you've got your awning out and the wind's blowing and it's drooping it down, anytime somebody opens and closes the uh, entry door, mm -hmm. it's not dragging on the... Uh, underside of the awning so reduces your risk of tearing a hole in it or anything like that so number seven the surge protector and we've talked about this one a couple of times it's a nice investment to do and you know with storms when you're out camping you don't want that blowing you know your breaker box and everything and I've heard I've had actually there's been a few people that we've known that have not had this their box was struck by lightning and it did a lot of damage to the camper. So yeah. these tear up definitely converter help. really quick. Yeah. Do you know hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars worth of damage to your yeah. the the next one is it's I think it's a little contra not not controversial. It's a little bit of a discussion. 99% of all the RVs out there ha use the same key for your storage locks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a 751 key. I think most generally you can walk into a locksmith and say, hey, I need a 751 key, and he'll open a drawer and throw one up there on the counter. Right. I don't think it's a big issue uh, for the most part. I think camping is such a, a good, tight community that I don't think it's a big issue. But 
if you ever felt like you wanted to change those out, there are options to change them out to have more of a private key system so you don't have the 751 key that opens yeah. the majority of your storage compartments. Yeah. All right. So number nine is rubber wheel, rubber wheel chocks. I am going to learn to speak by the end of the day, <laughs> but rubber wheel chocks. So you've got your rub these rubber wheel chocks. You've also got plastic wheel chocks. There's obviously pros and cons. You know, with the rubber ones, you're not going to risk cracking them. Definitely make sure you have chocks, irregardless of which ones you get. Make sure you have them. But the rubber ones could be nice. Yeah, nobody wants to see a runaway camper in the campground as soon as you unhook. Not one bit. Mm -mm. There she goes! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, what comes after nine? Ten. But we only found nine. Our producer couldn't find a number ten. Nope. So we don't have a number 10 on the list. So I'm going to ask you, the viewers, what do you think is the 10th most important thing to have for your RV? Yeah. I've, I've got some ideas, but I don't want to, I don't want to spit them out there. No. Beer, beer is not a gadget. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here, all that takes away. Neither is Bloody Mary's. <laughs> no, you know what? I, I would, I would argue that. Miller Lite makes the little inner twisted uh, bottle for a smoother pour. I don't know. I, I think there are some gadgets involved in that. <laughs> you can get those, uh, the metal mugs that you put in the free, the, in the freezer and then you take them out and pour your beer in it and it keeps them ice cold. Yetis help keep your cocktails. I, there are some serious gadgets involved in the professional drinking realm. He has, he has thought camera. about this. But I don't think those are necessarily a necessity because I can drink out of a bottle. I can drink warm beer. Right. Because there, you know, there are two kinds of beer I drink. The kind I buy and the kind somebody else buys. I'm not overly particular other than that. Uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what other people think of, though. Yeah. Maybe they Send us in your ideas. Them. Put them in the comments below. Yeah. All right. Make our producer feel silly because he couldn't find the tell. He'll, he'll start reading them and go, oh, duh, <laughs> why didn't I have that on there? <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe an RV? How about that? That's probably number one. The oh most gadget. important gadget for your RV is the RV. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Could be. Oh, my goodness. Industry news. It's the same as last week. Yeah. Unfortunately, not a ton of stuff. Not a ton of stuff. I mean, still good stuff going on as far as what the manufacturers are doing to help our healthcare workers. Um, Lots of PPE stuff. Yes. But really nothing, no new update from the great stuff that's been going on. So we're what, like five weeks, six weeks into to this stuff? Yeah. And I have to admit that about two weeks ago I finally figured out, I kept reading the abbreviation for PPE. Yeah. I finally figured out what it was. You didn't know? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Personal protection equipment, right? Yeah. 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 I was waiting to see if you actually knew Listen, what it was. My husband... So he, your husband he, sells it. He does, and he does a lot of the safety equipment. So if I didn't know, he'd be very disappointed yeah. that I. Then he'd be like, "You've never listened to any of our conversations," yeah. <laughs> which sometimes I do that. Right. <laughs> but stay tuned, because there is industry news coming. Oh, okay. Tony said so. Well, the factories are supposed to open back up first part of May sometime. They are. So yeah. the next couple of weeks, there's going to be some news. It might be, hey, guess what? We're open. <laughs> We're building RVs. But there will be news. There will be news. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Is Another, that it? That's it. Episode 15 done Another down. Another successful. I, okay, it was a good episode. Next week I'm going to do better at talking. I know. Get it under control. I know something that we need to do. What? So episode 14, you sharted. Episode 15, you farted. Let's see. I didn't actually do those things, so I just. You just said them. I just said them. You just said them. <laughs> Which, in clarification, is a good idea because nobody's wearing a mask. <laughs> so, let's ask our viewers: Does anybody have an opinion on what Mallory might miss say in episode 16? That's going to become like Keep it the clean. new... 
the new poll. Every week. <laughs> the new poll each what week. What is Mallory going to mess up this yeah. week? Yeah, bookies in Vegas will be, uh, they'll be tallying up your, your comments and adding those to, and we'll go from there. There we go. I'm down for it. Let's see what you guys say. <laughs> I'll be a All good right. sport. <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week for episode 16, 16. and something silly Mallory will say then. Yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> see you next week. Bye. Bye.